Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the XCOM 2 Linux port. I'm going to be covering quite a number of things, as always you can skip to the parts that matter to you with the timeline links in the description down below. Before we get started, I am using the Nvidia 358.16 driver on Ubuntu and the 361.43 driver on Windows. Let's get started! First up, we're taking a look at the difference in graphical settings. On the left side is Ubuntu and on the right side is Windows. And we will be taking a look at the graphical presets that are available in the game from minimal to maximum. And as can be seen visibly, we have the exact same graphical settings as the Windows version. Feral have done a pretty good job in bringing us the exact same game in this regard. Next up, we take a look at the RAM and CPU usage of XCOM 2. We're running the tutorial level at medium preset with a resolution of 1080p. On Ubuntu, XCOM 2 idles around 20 to 21 percent of CPU usage, with 1.9 gigs of RAM utilized. On Windows, XCOM 2 idles around 16 to 18 percent of CPU usage, with 1.6 gigabyte of RAM utilized. I did notice a memory leak in the Linux port that can be easily reproduced. When changing between graphical presets in one runtime, RAM usage soars up to 7 gigabytes for me on Ubuntu and is unable to return to normal until closing the game. This may cause crashes for people with 8 gigabytes of RAM or less. Now we're going to take a look at image quality and I'll be switching between minimal settings and maximum settings to give you an idea of whether anything is visibly missing from the scenes. I cover some footage from on the ground whilst in battle on the tutorial level first, then we move on to a scene from the armory with my Psy soldier. The things to take note of here are the textures, shadows, lighting, depth of field, bloom, and anti-aliasing. It's pretty visible that everything is in order, and nothing seems to be missing in the Linux port compared to the base Windows game, which is a very very good thing. Now we're going to be taking a look at a side-by-side -side comparison on medium settings here, and you'll notice that the Linux performance actually nearly rivals the Windows performance almost, almost exactly. Now this is in contrast to my previous video where I was using the 361 drivers which actually perform a lot worse. I had no idea at the time, but now that I've had time to test it myself, the 358 drivers perform admirably on Linux and Feral have done actually a pretty good job, considering how this runs almost exactly like Windows on medium settings. In fact, there's some results after this that I'll show you that will be pretty interesting to see overall. This is not a frame by frame comparison, so I'm doing my best here to keep the scenes in sync and doing the same actions throughout, but you will notice that things aren't always exactly the same when uh, the camera pans. So this is the best I can do since this game does not come with a benchmark mode. So we do see it drop slightly lower than the window side there just now, 39 frames per second was the lowest so far. Still admirable considering that there is translation going on behind the scenes. Overall, Feral have done a pretty good job actually. This is a really, really good job. I'm really surprised after seeing this myself. I was definitely expecting a lot worse. The 361 definitely performs a lot worse. The 358 drivers are definitely the go-to drivers if you're going to be playing this on Linux. So first up, we have the minimal preset graph here. And you'll notice that the Ubuntu performance actually outdoes the Windows performance ever so slightly. And only in the medium preset do we see the... 358 drivers go slightly less than the Windows driver. When we bring it up back to maximum after this, you'll see that once again the 358 drivers on Ubuntu surpass the Windows performance and quite significantly, as I'll show you quickly in this side-by-side -side video up next, which I, I couldn't believe with my own eyes at first, the performance is significantly different. So on the left is Ubuntu and on the right is Windows and the... To, to put it lightly, it's only playable on Ubuntu if I'm going to be running this at maximum. If I'm running it at maximum, it's just not usable at all on Windows. It's not even just in-game battles. When you get into the Avenger, like right here, you'll notice that the game struggles to follow my mouse cursor and when I try to zoom into sections of the ship, it lags like hell. So this may just be for the 600 series cards, it may not be the exact same experience for those on 900 series, but this was something surprising to see at the very least. I was expecting this to be butter smooth on Windows, and it isn't. 
So there is definitely some magic that Furl has put into the port here for it to work this well on Linux and not that well on Windows. So here's a quick look at the graphics driver performance that I get with the three latest drivers on Ubuntu. And it's pretty clear that the 361 drivers do not perform as well as the 358 drivers as seen here. So once again, it's pretty clear that if you want to play this on Linux, please use the 358 drivers for now. So one final thing I decided to check before ending this benchmark was an article posted by Skane on Gaming on Linux, hopefully I'm saying that name correctly, where he posted that if you change the pool size and a couple of config options in the .ini file, you should see a performance boost and an overall improvement in the input and no more jitterness or lag between the action scenes. However, for me, this did not have an impact at all. In fact, it pretty much didn't do anything for my system. So that said, it may be a hit or miss if you're going to try these tweaks. At least for me, they did not do anything different. All right, so it's time to wrap up this video and hopefully I haven't made too many mistakes. It is important to note that this video took quite a while to come out because I took a lot of days to get this done. I redid the tests quite a number of times. I was worried at first that I may have been doing something wrong. I, I shut down my... Windows computer a number of times to make sure that things were fresh each time I started it up and the results are pretty much consistent on my machine. That said 700 and 900 series cards may experience slightly different results in the end so please feel free to share your results with me in the comments down below but please make sure that you run through the tutorial level as I have done to make sure that it's the same. If you're running through a different map of course you're going to be seeing different types of frame rates so it wouldn't be a one-to-one -one comparison. So hopefully this video shed some light on the Linux performance a little bit more in depth than my previous video. It's definitely looking good so far, Feral definitely seemed to be improving. So if you haven't gotten this game for Linux and you're thinking about it, it's definitely a good buy. I finished it in 51 hours on Linux and it's an absolute blast. Once again, thanks to the guys over at Feral for providing me with this review copy to do this. So hopefully you got something useful out of this video and thank you for watching.